Howdy folks. So uh, I was changing my strings a while ago, my fiddle, and I, I realized yesterday was an important date. And uh, while I was wiping it down, looking around, looking inside and everything, I saw the little label that I put inside of it when I redid it, uh, when I first started using it on stage. I finished it, put that label in there exactly 14 years ago yesterday. As far as the fiddle goes, I actually bought it from a lady on Craigslist for $150 in 2006, as I recall. Springtime of 06, I believe. It was a cheap Chinese made fiddle, it had a real thick metal flake, polyurethane finish on it, it sounded really dead. It had a $10 little transducer pickup glued inside the belly, a little plastic plate around the side with a quarter inch jack for it. Of course, it sounded terrible. But uh, I just got it because I wanted a five string to mess around with at the house and work on my Johnny Gimbal legs. And uh, that's about where it stayed for close to a year, was at the house. I played on it occasionally when I was off at the house. You know, I'd, I'd get out in the garage and just mess around and try to figure some stuff out with that low C string. After talking to Gary Allen and looking at his, he had these relic uh, Tompkins guitars, it's a company out of Australia, and one of them was green. And I was looking at those guitars and talked to his guitar tech during sound check about it and said, I got to thinking about it and I thought, you know, I wonder if I got some of that thick metal flake plastic black finish off of that fiddle and uh, distressed it, gave it some character like that, or relic it, that uh, I wonder what it might not sound halfway decent with a, with a good pickup on it. And I thought, well, you know what? If I mess it up, it was only 150 bucks. So I went back and forth and finally I talked myself into it. So I went and gathered up some supplies and I just proceeded to start sanding and uh, sanded it down quite a bit. And I used some different things like a rub and buff, some you know, craft store supplies from Hobby Lobby and uh, to give it a bit of a relic to look. And uh, I replaced the little plastic plate, which had broken uh, with a piece of hobby metal that I also relic to match the instrument. I reached out to my contact at LR Bags Transducers up in Washington State, a fellow by the name of Ryan, and had him send me a pickup. And uh, I put that pickup on it, and lo and behold, it sounded pretty good. Well, of course, I had every intention of, of sealing it some way or another just to protect it. But before I had a chance, we left to go on a tour of Iraq with Charlie Robinson and Kevin Fowler. So I actually went on that trip with that fiddle, sanded down and unfinished. While there, every time we did a grip and grin or meet and greet, I'd have the troops sign my fiddle. And pretty quickly I had my fiddle filled up with signatures. So the instrument quickly became very sentimental to me, even though part of the reason I wanted to carry it on the road as opposed to the instruments I'd been playing that were older and worth much more, uh, worth, worth a lot more, and uh, had greater sentimental value was that if something happened to it, it wouldn't be a big deal. Of course, now at this point, if something happened to it, I don't know what I'd do because it is really the only fiddle I play anymore. Uh, I've grown to it, and it has grown to me over the years. It, it's been everywhere with me, and it's been around the world multiple times. Uh, I got back to Austin one time and found out it was lost somewhere in London. That was a pretty scary experience, but I can't understand how Willie feels when he talks about Trigger. It's just, you know, it's like an extension of yourself. I've only recently started noticing how much wear from just playing is starting to show on the instrument. I've always had particular issues moving back a half step. Uh, because my fingers are crowded into the pegs. Well, as you can see here, I've actually worn a groove in the peg box and the back side of the nut is worn down from my finger from moving back a half step to play, for instance, in, say B flat. My current rig, I'm running through a radial PZDI and the only reason I'm running into that is to uh, change my impedance 
and from there the signal goes through a universal audio uh, I believe it's a LA 710 uh, but it's a combination to solid state and to UA uh, uh, vocal strip preamp it has a blend knob so that you can dial in how much tube or solid state you would like. When I first began using the, the Universal Audio unit, I was picking up radio signals, like radio squelch, and after consulting more than a dozen very competent professional sound men, including uh, some of George Strait's sound crew, and the engineers at Universal Audio, we finally figured out that there was an impedance issue that was causing the uh, pickup on my fiddle to actually receive radio signals. And it was amplifying it through the preamp, so it was coming through on the PA. And the way to fix it was we had to put the uh, radial PZDI in line where we could switch it from one mega ohm to 10 mega ohms to match impedance on the pickup. Once I did that, it cleaned it up, it sounds wonderful. Also, coincidentally, once I did that, I was able to hear harmonics and overtones and more air and breathy noises and sounds through my pickup in my in-ears that uh, I'd ever been able to hear before out of the pickup. And that includes back when I was running the same pickup and fiddle through a uh, Millennia STT2 uh, Origin Twin Topography preamps. And, uh, I just, that thing got too heavy to drag around all the time. So that's my rig rundown. Hope y'all enjoyed it, and catch y'all next time.